English and I uh, I made a uh, Google Slides. So if it's, I have a few links on there as well. So if it's uh, easier to follow along, I'll paste it in the chat in case anyone needs it. Um, Can you see my screen if it's sharing? Yes, it's sharing. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I'll mainly be talking about uh, Canadian universities, universities and colleges plus um, portfolio, uh, mainly for uh, animation portfolio. And I'll also briefly go over a little bit of um, illustration and drawing and painting. I'll tell you how to apply and uh, prepare for a portfolio. I'm also going um, over how to apply since people don't really tell you this stuff. They kind of just give you a link and you have to figure out everything by yourself. Um, so first of all, choosing schools. Uh, well, decide what you like to do. For me, um, I don't think I really decided on an actual school until I was in uh, grade 11. <laughs> Um, so it's good to have a rough idea of uh, what you like to do. And um, a good starting point is the uh, My Blueprint website. I'm sure uh, your school probably has this. You probably use it for uh, looking at your marks and stuff and choosing courses. Um, so if you go into uh, the post-secondary option, you can search for uh, programs and um, there's also filters where you can search for programs in uh, your specific area or for American institutions as well. And I found this really helpful. You can also build uh, portfolios or kind of like pin or favorite programs you like so you can keep track. And um, the link is also here in case you need it. It's also really important after uh, you've chosen uh, certain uh, universities or colleges to do more research on uh, that school. For example, the reputation and um, student feedback and all that. For uh, applying to Ontario universities and colleges, um, you actually apply through uh, two websites. One is the OUAC or Ontario Universities Application Center and OCAS, the Ontario College Application Service. Um, this is the university one and this is the college one. You can also search for programs through here. And you can browse by, um, by the university or by your area. Same goes for a uh, college. You use your email to create an account. Uh, I recommend using your personal email since your school email would expire after graduating and you create a username and password. For Ontario universities, you need a OUAC pin to apply. Basically your high school will send you an email with the pin. And this happens usually in late October. There's a $150 base application fee. Basically, you pay $150 and you get to choose uh, three programs. And it's up to three programs at the same university. It can be uh, three different ones or a few from the same. But some universities, they limit it even further. For example, OCAD, you can only choose uh, one program there. Um, it can be paid on the website and it's an additional $50 for another program outside of the first three. For Ontario colleges, um, it's kind of similar, but you don't need a pin. Just an email is enough. Uh, the base application fee is $95 and this is for uh, five programs. And it's the same, up to three programs at the same college. It can also be paid through the website and I think it's $20 per extra, like outside of the uh, five programs you've already chosen. For me, I just did, uh, for both, I did the base application 
um, three universities and uh, five college programs. I don't think my camera is working. Is my screen still shared though? It's still sharing, but I can't see your face. Ah, okay. I don't think my camera is working, but uh, I guess it's all right. Thank you. Um, after you apply, you'll receive an email verifying your application from the uh, the university or college website. Uh, you'll also receive emails from the schools you applied to after a while. Uh, this would usually take about a few days up to a week. However, some schools are slower. I don't know why, but it took OCAD a month. I applied in um, early November and it took them till December to send me an email about the application. In the email, you'll probably receive instructions to log into their school website so you can make an account. Basically, uh, they'll give you your username, your password, and all that. You might receive portfolio instructions in the same email, or it might be in a different email later on, depending on when you apply. For example, uh, for Sheridan, I received the portfolio instructions about half a month after I applied. Um, and in case you're wondering, all of your transcripts, marks, and volunteer hours, they should be sent automatically to the university or college by your school. But I'm not sure if every school does this, so you should check with your school just to be sure. Because if you don't get your transcript sent, uh, they won't be able to um, accept you. Uh, here are some important dates. So application start date. Um, in Ontario, at least, usually starts in October. The application deadline. This is the uh, dead, this is not the deadline for the portfolio. Just the deadline for um, when you have to submit your application. For universities, it it was uh, January fifteenth this year, and uh, for college, it was February first. I'm assuming it'll probably stay the same or similar for coming years. For portfolio due dates, um, it highly depends on the school. It's not always the same, so read instructions really carefully. But it would usually be in January or February. For uh, other certain uh, due dates, for Sheridan, for example, the due date was in late February. And for most universities, such as OCAD, the due date was in mid-January. However, there might be um, other colleges you apply to uh, just as a backup. I did, um, for some of those, I did uh, George Brown and Humber, for example. Um, for these, they never specified the due date. So uh, I attended one of their um, kind of like presentation things and I asked about the due date, they said, it's preferred that you hand everything in by February 1st, which is also the uh, application deadline, which means it would be really better to apply earlier. Although these uh, portfolio due dates, well, the ones without any deadlines, they usually don't have any specification. So it's usually like maybe 10 to 15 of your best pieces. As for uh, dates to accept your offer, like, after you applied and you get your offers and stuff. For university, it's uh, June 1st. And for college, it's May 1st. You accept them on the uh, university and college website. For creating a portfolio, of course, every school is different. Some require specific portfolios, such as, for example, the ones I applied to, Sheridan and Seneca. And some are just a number of your best works. For example, OCAD. I'll be mainly talking about portfolios for programs like animation and briefly go through illustration. Um, before that, I guess I should uh, show my um, animation portfolio. How do I do this?
this was the uh, the score sheet. I got a total score of uh, ninety one percent. The cutoff this year was unusually high. It was eighty nine. Previous years it would be around uh, eighty five or eighty six. So I'm really lucky to have gotten in, even if it's uh, even if I just got a little bit over the cutoff. These are the longer life drawings I did. And this is the character rotation. Uh, the shorter life drawings. Hand drawing. Uh, this year it was um, an anticipation movement and the uh, action. It was holding and throwing an object. This is the interior um, perspective. This is the exterior. This is the short animation. They give you a template of, of what to draw each year. And this was the uh, storyboard. There's also a different prompt each year and they give you uh, characters. For example, um, this year they give you uh, this character called uh, Possum. And you have to build a uh, storyboard around that character. And personal work, it was, um, I think, five to seven pieces of your original work. Most of these I did were done digitally, but I think they would like to see a variety of uh, both. This was traditional. This last one was kind of rushed. It, it wasn't that good. Um, okay, back to a typical animation portfolio. Uh, life drawings are very common in animation portfolios. And things that are pretty important are uh, line quality and proportion. For line quality, they would rather give, uh, they would rather you have a continuous line rather than um, short lines. And uh, for animation though, for animation life drawings, shadows aren't quite as important. They're uh, pretty much optional, but I, um, well, what my teacher said was, it's good to have like the shadow here between the feet. So it shows a bit more depth. Proportion is really important as well. So um, be careful not to make the uh, hands or feet too big or the head too small. I think like, for example, here, I could have added more detail for the feet. For short drawings, which are one to three minutes, you should prioritize flow and energy, like energy of the movement. And for longer drawings, which are five to 10 minutes, you should prior prioritize proportion and uh, line quality. Another really um, common portfolio piece are uh, hand drawings. Oh, by the way, these pieces are all um, specified by that specific uh, program. Like they're not part of your uh, personal pieces. Um, it's important to have a uh, correct proportion and to show structure and construction underneath as well. Perspective drawings. Um, Depending on the school, you might not have to do both interior and exterior. Um, construction, it's optional, but it might help you more, I guess. Uh, I think they would like to see a two-point perspective most. And line quality is really important here too. For example, um, closer objects, you would see that the line is thicker. And for further objects, the line are thinner. And this also gives a uh, sense of depth. For tone, it's not necessary, but if it helps, you can add a bit. Uh, character rotation. This also isn't present in uh, every animation portfolio requirement, but uh, for some, there are. Uh, what they're looking for the most is obviously um, consistency between the, um, the line thickness, shape, and uh, size for your character. Construction isn't necessary, but um, 
I think it's better to show up it and it helps yourself like a lot as well. Uh, you should have a character with a strong silhouette, like a specific body shape. Animation, um, not all animation portfolios require you to do actual animation, but for some there are. It's good to exaggerate movements like squash and stretch, for example, um, on the image on the right, the ball is squashed and there should be a clear line of movement and volume consistency. So if you squash the ball, then um, the volume should still stay consistent. It should be wider than if you squash it. For a storyboard, um, line quality is important as well, like the uh, perspective. Closer objects, thicker lines, further objects, thinner lines. There's also a rule called the 180 degree rule. So basically in your storyboard, uh, you shouldn't go over to the other side. You shouldn't go over 180 degrees. And your character should um, probably stay on the same side since it is the 180 degree rule. It should tell a story and it should be pretty obvious to the viewer what it's saying. So um, I think a good thing to do if you're doing a storyboard is to create a rough sketch and then show it to someone without having the uh, text at the bottom and see if they can figure out what's going on. If they can very easily, then um, your portfolio, uh, no, your storyboard is pretty obvious and uh, that's a good thing. For other personal work, um, for Sheridan in general, Sheridan animation, they don't like to see more life drawings since you already have a lot before. Um, you could do a compilation of sketchbook pages and uh, they really want to see what you like to draw un unless it's anime, they don't like anime. Since um, the rest of the portfolio, the requirements, they're all uh, black and white, it'd be really nice to put some color and you should build it to be more fit for animation, such as uh, character design, uh, character actions, maybe some perspective or uh, comic panels if you do that. So some other advice I have is um, typically for the portfolio, other than the personal work, line art is a lot more important than color and shading. Life drawing is very important as well. And if you can, you should really start early. So that way you'll have um, a lot to choose from. And since life drawings are usually really fast, uh, they're not too consistent all the time. So if you start early, you'll have a lot more options. Showing depth is also really important in an animation portfolio. For example, for the character rotation and perspective drawings, you can show depth with a uh, different line quality, construction, and maybe a bit of tone, but don't overdo it with tone or shadow. And like I said before, they don't like uh, seeing anime. They're, mo they're more uh, biased with cartoons. They don't like seeing too much realism either. So I tried really hard not to draw any anime at all. And uh, this Discord link I posted was, um, it's for the uh, Sheridan Animation 2022 Hopefuls Discord group. I think it'd be pretty helpful if uh, you can get feedback from peers there. For a typical illustration portfolio, um, I also apply to uh, Sheridan Illustration as well as OCAD for uh, drawing and painting. Uh, for OCAD, though, they didn't specify exactly what you needed to hand in. It was more uh, free, I guess. As for the Sheridan illustration portfolio, to be honest, I don't think I did that well since most of the things were rushed at the very end. But especially for portfolios like this, where it's more, um, I guess, where you have to work with more traditional media, 
it's really good to start early. I started way too late and I had to rush things since they needed a minimum of 15 pieces of personal work. And so I just rushed everything in the end, but yeah. Um, they also tell you to do some life drawing, but unlike the animation portfolio, uh, well, I did use the same one since I think the one I did for illustration was better. Uh, here you can do more realism and shading and proportion is more important as well as lighting. They really like you to, um, well, they really want to see lighting and how it shows a form. They also want you to do still life. Usually they would want you to work out your own composition. So the weight should be balanced on both sides of the composition. Again, lighting is really important to show form. Use uh, lighting and shadows to show form. For a room, um, we also had to draw a room with a single uh, lighting. Perspective is important as well as, again, lighting. Um, personal works would take up most, if not all, of the portfolio. Most colleges, I think, would like to see more observational drawings, like more tech, technique based, more technical. And universities, they like to see more conceptual. Like, uh, for example, OCAD, I went to their um, national portfolio day thing and had some critique on that portfolio. Uh, the professor there told me that I could tell more of a story and be more experimental with my art pieces but I don't think I had the time to do that. So there, for, the, for my OCAD portfolio, I kind of reused a lot of things from my animation and illustration portfolio, uh, but I somehow still got in. And for these, um, for illustration and uh, most art universities, it's really, really important to show a lot of process. Show everything from your, uh, ideas to concepts, rough sketches, and um, pictures of the actual process. They really like to see um, your ideas, where you got your inspiration from, and all that. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you for listening.